now through the miracles of modern technology. Zany Worldwide Banner featuring Tom, Michelle, and Jim in an on-topic, off-topic free-for-all. Welcome to the Gun Talk After Show. It's the After Show where we gather to have real fun and keep talking about guns and things and stuff like that. We're joined today by Mr. Jim Kinsey, who is the Grand Poobah running the board and everything else. Hi, Jim. Greetings, sir. And then, of course, we have the lovely Michelle Cleland, who is actually the star, because everybody calls to talk to you. <laughs> oh, so humbling. Hi, Tom. Hi, Sam. Oh, yeah, she had to look it up. She says, hi, Tom. Oh, and who's that guy? Yeah, I don't know. She Hello, was, fan club. She was, looking, she was looking at her agent to see if, if her agent said it's okay for her to speak or not. Is, is it, is it, may I? That's right. It's a... But, but enough of me talking about me. What do you think about me? Right. <laughs> we'll do that off air. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. <sighs> Dogs and cats living together. This was kind of our preparedness uh, day. There you go. Yep. I, just did, I don't know how it ended up that way, but it just took on that uh, bent. Uh, probably coming out of the, uh, I'm, I'm me thinking so much about the. The floods down here. I mean, they were pretty horrible. A lot of the media didn't cover it for quite a while. It's kind of like, yeah, there's some water down there. And we're going, no, no, no. This is massive flooding. It's like, you know, right behind uh, Superstorm Sandy in terms of floods. It's amazing. But, you know, I don't think they know how to find Baton Rouge or Denham Springs. You know, if, if this had happened on the East Coast or the West Coast, then it would have been more news. Oh, sure. Speaking of Louisiana, Speaking we, of have, Louisiana. we have Matthew down in Metairie. Who is, actually in, wants- in Metairie. As, as we like to say down here, Metri. Metri, Metri, Metri. Right. Matthew's on. He's on. He's on the South Shore in Metri. Hey, go. Matthew. <laughs> hey. Speaking of preparedness, I'll throw this one in real quick. I carry sure. a life jacket in my Cherokee because I cross the causeway every day. Hmm. Funny you. Yeah. Funny you mention. I carry a uh, window breaking device uh, in my car for crossing the causeway, the longest bridge in the world, twenty four plus miles, and. Uh, every year, you know, two or three cars go over the side, and in fact, they just pulled a guy out. Uh, what, it was about two or three weeks ago. His truck jumped the rail. Yep, fished another one out. Well, it another was one amazing out. to me to watch the non-coverage and the fact that our president, who's the president of all of the United States, didn't even have a press briefing. Well, that lady from uh, the Air Force, real sharp lady, mm-hmm. she's absolutely yep. right about the logistics of moving the president around. It would have right. been a nightmare had he actually come, but he could have had right. at least had a press briefing. He could have at least stood <laughs> up and said, hey, we're, we're, we're thinking of you or something. But no, it was kind of like, can I play through? It'd be, uh, you know. Yeah, no oh, doubt. man. But, for, you know, for those yeah, there's da- time down between here. Holes. He could have taken the time. <laughs> he has the course to himself. Yeah, it's not like there's a lot of traffic. He can go as fast as he wants to. The Secret Service will move people out of his way. <laughs> <laughs> as if there's anybody else on the course anyway, right? Oh, right. And then, Lordy. of course, you know, Donald Trump comes down and the the line of the week for me was the people of the area that he went to said, we knew you would come. I know. I saw that. And that's something they said. We knew that you would come. And he didn't just come. He brought 18 wheelers full of supplies and money that he pulls out of his pocket hundred thousand dollars for a church there you know i mean that's yeah. it's just we knew we knew you would come there you go yeah and well, i tell you what this last week um you know looking at donald trump this last week versus the previous weeks yeah if this keep, keeps up his chances are going to start to improve vastly although i think some people are going to have to go talk glenn beck off a cliff good lord the man's gone crazy well I kind of quit listening to him a long time ago. I have stopped listening to him. I can't anymore. These never yeah, Trumpers yeah. are depressing me. Well, you know what it is? It's it's like we want to lose. Really? That's you know that the never Trump is the I'm okay with losing group because yeah, that's they've all never it is. Been through a civil a real civil war, stock up on toilet paper too, you morons. Jesus, just. You know, I just they the whole deal of never Trump. Okay, well that means always Hillary because there are no other choices. The Republicans are not going to run anybody else. And if you say, well, I'm, what are you going to do? You going to stay away? You going to support Libertarian? I mean, look, I'm sure Gary Johnson's a great guy. I've had him on the show here, but all he does is sucks votes away from Trump, which helps Hillary, which gives us 
the most anti-gun president in the history of the United States, who nobody's ever said, I will ban guns, like she does. I will ban guns. Nobody's ever said, I'm going to reverse Supreme Court decisions, which where the Supreme Court said, uh, Washington, D.C., you can't ban guns. She said, oh, no, that was a bad decision. We want them to be able to ban guns. So, I mean, I don't, I don't get the whole never Trump. But you know what it is? At least for a lot of the people in the Republican leadership, the elites, they, and here's the part that's hard for people to understand, they don't really care who wins as long as it's one of them. And one of them being the insiders up there that greases the skids, that keeps the lobbyists going, that makes the system work so they can all make money out of their industry. And their industry is milking us for money so they can do whatever they need to do. And Trump threatens that whole thing, whether it's the Democrats or Republicans, and the whole industry, and that's what scares them. And they are absolutely fine if Hillary wins. I'm talking about a lot of the leadership in the Republican Party are fine if Hillary wins because they're thinking, well, that gives us somebody to run against the next time, and it doesn't upset the apple cart. There you go. Hey, Matthew, I appreciate the call, sir, and uh, you're exactly right about the, the people in the floods there. Let's see. We got actually speaking of Louisiana, we got uh, Brent in Gonzales, Louisiana, which is for those of you who don't know, just south of uh, Baton Rouge, and Gonzales got hit pretty hard too. Hey, Brent. How you doing, buddy? Uh, first off, my daddy loves your show. Um, I didn't know you said you were close to Baton Rouge. Are you in Louisiana? I'm in. I'm in Covington. Okay, cool. The reason is uh, my daughter and I make a product called Quick Glow, and I sell it at gun shows and stuff. It's a non-toxic cleaner you can use to get rust off your barrels and stuff. Puts a wax yeah. coat on there, and the rust doesn't come back for up to a year if you're going to, like, store them until you have time to go back and re-blue them. Or you can clean the stocks. You can clean the trigger guards. You can clean – it's water-based, so it doesn't hurt anything. And it never dries out. The record for one person with one jar of Quick Glow is, like, 31 years. So every time I get a little dry, just add a little water. And I wanted to offer a discount – so for people listening to your show or something, we'll call it the ABC discount. Anybody but Clinton. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. Yeah, I'll be glad to okay. do that for them. It's a good product. It's only $15 for an 8-ounce jar. You can use it to clean the water spots on your mirror to take rust off the of chrome, to clean your brass guards and trigger guards and stuff. It's a really great product. Uh, I'm, like I'm looking on the website now. I can it, possibly it, it, come by there if you're going to be in Coving tomorrow and give you some. You can try man, it out. I wish I, 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 I'm going to be out of town all week, but I'll tell you what. Um, my email address is tom at guntalk.com. Real easy. Uh, but I'm looking at your website, uh, quick hyphen glow. It's q u i c k dash glow.com. Yes, sir. You should be, uh, okay. my daughter and me should be on there. We make it on our front porch and our crawfish pot. Is that Kunas enough? Man, I guess so. I love it. I will put some hot uh, sauce uh, in it next year and call it the Cajun Special. <laughs> hey, all right. I got. Well, first of all, we're going to do this, and we'll let you. How do people, if they want to buy some of this stuff and get uh, a discount, the, the ABC discount? How do they do that? Do they put in like a make an order and put in a message and call it Gun Talk or ABC or something? Or just put Gun Show on there, um, or put Tom. And I'll just refund okay. their freight back because my website's not set up that. We got hit pretty good. I had water all the way around me, and God bless me. It was only four foot of water down my street. But it got into our um, garage and other stuff. Kind of got some materials and different things wet. So it'll help out a little bit if we can get some orders. But um, it was sure. it was people. I was so impressed. I went down to the local fire department on Friday, and there was no water even in my ditch at that time. And for about nine hours, I shoveled sand with kids. I'm talking eighth graders, nine graders. Ninth graders, they never stopped. Their butt never hit the ground. They were sand all over them, and they were shoveling and bagging and loading 40-pound sands of suds. And so it was just amazing. I was so humbled by these young kids that was out there instead of on their Facebook or their selfies and everything else. It was just really amazing. Awesome. But they can it was, it was Q-U-I-C, really capital Q, U-I-C, dash, capital G-L-O. Dot com place an order the original heavy duty and that would be for like cleaning really old stuff or heavy rust and some guns and stuff that you want to restore later um it'll get all the rust and stuff off there and clean the trigger guards and then the fine is better than maintenance formula and for light rust and if you don't want to upset the bluing and then i make a new one that's 6500 grit that you could just use right over the top of the blue and it doesn't even affect it all right i got it we got that all right now brent tell them about the cajun navy 
Oh, the Cajun, it was the Cajun uh, Navy down here. It was just people, everybody just pouring out of the woodwork to help people. My mother had a generator that went out, and she needs it because she's on air. And um, she was in Baton Rouge, which is about 30 miles away. And I went through four foot of water and found some guys with a boat at the end of the street that would launch right there into the church parking lot in the ditch, go to a friend of mine's house, pick up a generator, bring me back, put the boat back on the trailer, put the generator in the truck, and drive my butt to Gonzales to get my mom a generator. Two young boys are doing this, doing this stuff all day long. <laughs> people just, just showed people up, like didn't they? They, they just the showed up. It's okay to give out my phone number. They can call me directly, and I'll, if they go through me, sure. I'll just take the freight off in the beginning, if you don't mind. Yeah, give out the phone number. 225 937 0276. 225 937 0276. Give a shout out to Sidney Deloach for me. He loves your show. <laughs> Sidney Deloach. All right. Good deal. I'm, I'm glad you made it through, Brent. Thanks for sharing the information, and we'll get the word out for you. It's 225 937 0276. Uh, Brent needs some help with his business, but also he's got, uh, sounds like a pretty cool product. i got to get some of that stuff and try it out. Brent, thank you for the call. I appreciate that. Well, that's pretty cool, guys. Yeah, yeah. no doubt. <clears throat> you, it, it's just hard if you didn't see it on you know, an every hour, or every half hour basis like we were to, to understand what was going on here and the way that people just dropped everything. I mean, people who lived an hour or two or three away and just said, I'm not coming to work today. I don't. I may not be in this week. I don't know. And grabbed their truck and filled it up with everything they could and just drove and said, where do we, you know, who needs help? Where can we go? We've got to get people out of here. They just did it. You have a lot of uh, Black Lives Matter folks showed up too in Black Panthers, right? Good turnout. Yeah, yeah. That's, yeah, that's, you know, we were, strangely enough, I didn't see any of that. No, really? no help from those really? guys. It's, uh, yeah, the, the huh. as I, when I really want to tick off my super liberal friends, I say, oh, you mean the Hamas of the United States? Okay. <laughs> oh, I like that. I'm stealing that. <laughs> Just go with it, man. Hey, before the break, let's get Lee in here. He's been on hold for a little while. Hey, in Texas, Brownwood, Texas. Hey, Lee. Hey, guys. How's it going? Awesome. Great. Looking at that uh, quick glow here online. Looks like some pretty good stuff. I'm going to have to do some more reading here in a little bit after I get yeah. done with you. Uh, and yeah, see what I think. Um, anyway, before I get to what I called about, the reason the media is not covering what happened in uh, Louisiana, I actually heard yeah. some idiot on an interview make the statement that it's because it wasn't caused by a natural disaster like a hurricane. <laughs> <laughs> now, that's a pretty stupid reason for not covering something. I, what, I what, know, what, do they, what do they, what do they call <laughs> a uh, rainstorm that lasts for four days? He set a record for uh, his 200th golf game, which is more than any other sitting president in history, and now he's got to top his own record and try to do as many as he can so that when he leaves office, he's got a really good chance of holding that title for a really long time. <laughs> I mean, he set a record here, okay? And besides, he might as well stick with golfing because it's one of the few things that he can actually do <laughs> well. <laughs> If you, I tell you what, if you really want to have fun, as soon as you get off this call, run over to the Drudge Report. Right now, they've got a photograph there, a photoshopped picture that's hilarious. It's Obama standing on top of a flooded car in Louisiana, and he's chipping off of it. <laughs> okay, anyway, I wanted to get your opinion, and this is on twofold. One's my, one's my carry weapon, and the other is the way I carry it. First one mm -hmm. is my, my very first handgun was a twenty five semi semi-automatic. Uh, very mm -hmm. small, easy to handle, lightweight, but again, lots of moving parts, took a clip, all that, blah, 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 blah. And, you know, <laughs> what scared me off of the, the, the semi-automatic pistols like this is, you know, it. I'm just walking along one day, thankfully we're out in the woods, we were hunting, and I always carry a pistol with me when I hunt, because you never know, and wasn't even touching it, was in a holster on my hip, wasn't, didn't touch it, and it went off, missed my foot by about a half an inch. That kind of worried me from that point on about anything like this. Since then, I've carried a revolver. My current mm -hmm. carry weapon is a 32 long rifle that actually was manufactured in 1911. It's a Smith & Wesson 32 caliber long rifle. It is my carry weapon. And the reason why I swear by revolvers now is, one, you don't have the concern of a misfire because you actually have to cock a hammer back. 
Mm-hmm. Okay, you actually have to physically engage in cocking that hammer in order for that pistol to go off. The second thing, there is no safety, which means unless you cock it, you're never going to have to worry about it going off. And it takes too much pressure on the trigger to simply trigger fire for it to go off inadvertently by that method. Also, I never, ever, ever have to worry about a jam or seizing up or anything getting caught in that mechanism and a lot less moving parts, which means I will never have to disassemble this pistol to clean it. I've been carrying this thing for years. It actually was manufactured in 1911, so it's 100-something years old. Fire's true. I can draw, fire, and hit center mass virtually every time. At 30 yards. Okay, I don't disagree with most of your premise, but there are a couple of things there that I'd like to at least address, okay? Okay. Uh, first of all, you have found some revolver lovers here. Yeah, we we like our revolvers here. Um, Michelle is a big revolver fan. And in fact, strangely enough, she actually likes the 32s. It's just the 327 Federal, right? That That's right. I love the 32. And you say I, I shoot it out of a 327 chambered gun, but I shoot 32 Smith & Wesson Longs to uh, practice with all the time. Yeah. And the uh, right. and the, the 327 is just a uh, hopped up 32. So, you know, but I'm going to say this, Lee, you do need to clean revolvers uh, because when you get oh, enough gun and pocket lint. Okay. All right. Take it apart to clean it. Oh, okay. I got you. I got you. Yes. Okay. I'm, I never I'm with have you now. to disassemble this weapon. I can clean it on the fly. I just put mine in the which dishwasher. Means I don't have, which means I don't have to take time to sit down, disassemble, clean, and put back together. <laughs> gotcha. I understand. And look, there's a lot to be said for revolvers. Another thing, uh, now, I'm not a fan of cocking a revolver for self-defense use. I, I think that if once you cock it, you've got a very light trigger. I prefer to shoot double action for self-defense. Uh, but right. one thing that's really nice about revolvers is if something happens and you pull the trigger and it goes click, that all you have to that's do is pull the trigger thing. again. Mm-hmm. Just pull, pull the pull the trigger again. I, I'm with you. I, I think you know you might want to. I don't know. I'm just saying. Well, if that's a nice revolver, but you might want to consider getting something a little bit um, more modern. <laughs> well, see, here's the here's the thing. I, I was always taught, you know, if you get a misfire, that's the worst thing I ever got to worry about is misfire. And there's a, uh, a ten second rule. You know, mm-hmm. unless of course you're in a firefight, then you really don't have ten seconds to wait. You kind of got no. You just pull the trigger again. But just it, pull the trigger again. It, yeah. You know. If it doesn't fire, that's that's just a misfire. It's nothing, nothing, and you deal with that very simply by, as you said, simply pulling the trigger. But I haven't bothered to update or go with anything newer because, like I said, at 30 yards, I can draw, level out, fire around, and hit center mass virtually every time. This thing is true. She, I mean, she is, I have never had a problem with it. I mean, I, I got it from my great uncle when he passed away. But it is the best handgun I've ever had. I swear by this thing. But it, like I that said, made in 1911, back when they actually made things to last. Yeah, I hear you. Back when they they did bring out another gun in 1911, too, I can think of. Hey, Lee, look, I appreciate the call, sir. Uh, we got to run to a break here. When we come back, we'll pick this up, talk about revolvers and 1911 kind of stuff. And is the revolver the best gun for you? Maybe the only gun for you. I don't know. We'll be right back. Fans of Slip 2000 EWL Gun Lubricant will want to try EWL 30 this summer. The thicker EWL 30 sits up, migrates less, stays wetter longer, and will not dry out. Perfect for long-term storage. It also holds up better in hotter conditions, while still providing the excellent high round count performance you have come to expect from the original EWL. Slip 2000. We're all about gun care. Learn more at slip2000.com. All right, we're back with you after the break here. Uh, we just had a call from Lee. He loves his revolver, guys. Revolvers are cool. <laughs> There's no doubt about it. But, you know, there, there are, are, there are just, several several semi-autos that have second strike capability as well. Yeah, and, and beyond that, the other issue is capacity. Mm-hmm. And that's the big knock on revolvers. Yeah, I just it's had this conversation five, with somebody about that. Yeah, It's five or six rounds. That's what you got. Now, I do have a, a couple of eight-shot revolvers. Uh, but they're bigger, and it's probably not something I'm going to carry. But, you know, it's kind of like, okay, what are you prepared 
You know, what are you preparing for? Well, I, I, you know me, I always carry an extra magazine. For your revolver. Yes. 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 It's very easy to okay. put a magazine in his revolver. It's usually an NRA magazine, but... <laughs> you, you know, it's funny you mention that. I know guys who carry a forty-five revolver, forty-five ACP revolver, hmm. and they carry a magazine, a pistol, semi-auto magazine yes. with ammo. Yeah. That's their reloading system for their revolver. Yeah. I've seen that, actually. And thumb them in. Yeah. It, isn't that interesting? No moon clip needed, huh? No moon clip needed. They have it set up where it uh, head spaces on the case mouth and just drops them in. You go a nice slim 1911 magazine. You just pop it out and you chook, 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 chook. Just thumb them in and you're, you're back in it. Hmm. It's yeah. kind of kind of weird. But, the, know, the conversation I had earlier in the week about revolvers versus semis was somebody who's uh, had access to a judge. And she said, you know, I think I'm going to just get that gun because, you know, that'll stop anything. Mm. I'm like, well, you know, if you can, if you look at the FBI stats, it's and do a little bit of math and rounding. You got three a, uh, average perps on a home invasion. It takes three mm-hmm. shots to have a hit, and three hits to have a stop. You're at 27 rounds right there. I mean, of course, every home invasion is different, but boy, is there ever a case for 30 round mags if you start doing the math. I was just going to say, when you do that, you're thinking, yeah, that AR is starting to look like the perfect home defense gun, yeah. isn't it? Yeah, because you don't, you know, there's no rule, there's no, you know, Robert's Rules of Order. Oh, I'm out of ammo. Can you guys hang on for a second while I reload? And, you know, think about this. Michelle, I'd love to, for you to weigh in on this one because I'm actually talking with a major gun manufacturer right now that it wants to position an AR as the perfect home defense gun for women. I do. Well, what it, do you think? It very well could be. I mean, there's lots to be said about the AR platform. It's lightweight. It can be Mm -hmm. adjusted. Everybody puts some sort of mag pool or or adjustable stock onto that firearm. Mm -hmm. You get a quad rail system. You can put a light on it. You can put a laser on it. I mean, you know, there's lots of things that can be adapted to it. You can have a a close scope option if that's what you want to go with. I you can or, do any, anything, dot. right? And at two, two, three, you can get over penetration, so you have to pick your ammunition wisely. You still have to do your homework, right. but there's sure. so many people that are trained for this on the military side, coming out as veterans. It's very mm. easy to manipulate. It mm-hmm. shoots and shoots and shoots. I mean, it, there's nothing that can stop them unless they get. Some of them have to be non-lubed and some need a little bit more lube than others but those are all things that you learn along the way so what about, why not what about a and there's like, no recoil right you've got 20 30 round magazines available now as long as they remain to be legal we'll see how all that comes get, out but get one of those surefire 60 round mags i love uh, it right well what about a, what about a uh, 300 blackout in sbr with a suppressor well, but then you're limiting, in my opinion, you're limiting yourself to availability of ammo. And if I'm going to go towards something, I want something that is going to be available any and everywhere. Okay. All right. Uh, that being said, what about the suppressor aspect? Suppressor, I think, is a great idea for home defense yeah. mm-hmm. because you, you really can do permanent damage to your hearing shooting inside. Plus, you don't want to hurt uh, any perpetrator's hearing. God right. forbid. <laughs> I do. I think I may have mentioned to you. I know uh, one guy, uh, actually an instructor at Gunsight, he keeps le- electronic muffs on his nightstand. Mm, mm-hmm. hmm. Says if you hear something, just jump up, put those on, turn them on. Two things. If I have to shoot, my hearing is protected, but also I can crank them up so I can hear Amplify, movement yeah. and things in the other room. Ah, a thinker. Ah. He's a thinking man. Imagine that. Well, you know, <laughs> these guys that do this all the time and they're playing around and shoot houses and going, huh. I wear my muffs in the shoot house, and I can hear somebody dragging his feet in the other room because I've got it turned up. Yeah. That might be useful. Heck, yeah. Mm-hmm. So now you're going to change the, the acronym to IOTOT. I often think of that. <laughs> <laughs> or I ought to think of that. Yeah. <laughs> I should have thought of that. <laughs> Why didn't I think of that? <laughs> oh. But, you know, oh, Lord. I... I it's interesting that they want to portray them more toward women because I think there's a lot of women that come in and ask for a shotgun. In my experience, a lot of women come in looking for a shotgun because, of mm-hmm. course, you know, that pumping sound is a, a universal reaction of holy crap. 
<laughs> you know, somebody's got something yeah. here. And, and they're short yeah. barrels, too. So we're looking at 16, 18-inch barrel rifles mm-hmm. and shotguns as it is. So mm-hmm. why not move to the two and, two three? And, and, and an AR with that, as you say, with the collapsible stock, you crank the stock down. You got a sixteen inch barrel on it. It's a very short rig. In fact, if you we've done this before, if you take somebody and show, have them shoulder that gun, and then see how far out it reaches, and then have them grab a pistol and hold it out a two hand grip, mm-hmm. it's almost the exact same length from your body. Well, in in the aspect, too, of adrenaline and everything being an issue, obviously with the handgun, everybody out there knows this already, but there's far less movement needed for a muzzle to be pointed at someone you don't intend it to be. And we all know, like driving, your car goes where your eyes are, so you're on and off the road. Mm -hmm. The same thing happens with those those guns. So I I don't know. I guess I'm I'm a proponent for that thought. Why not? I don't know if I want them to be pink, but... (laughs) Oh, come on. Well, okay, now, wait, now let, let, let's talk about that for a second, uh, because I'm, that is something that I keep wondering about. You know, they, a lot of these manufacturers want to make peak guns for women. And I'm wondering if a lot of women would really rather be thought of seriously and treated seriously. And, you know, don't give me some silly pink gun. That's the way I view this, is I'm not wanting to attract attention to what it is I'm doing. I'm wanting to be out there performing the same task of self-defense, defense defense of my family, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, target practicing. I want to be taken seriously. And to me, that's not by picking out a colorful firearm. Now, everybody has options. And if that's what brings you to this, then then great. Our industry gives you those options. But that's not Mm -hmm. my choice. So Mm. you're right. I I want it to be just like everybody else's. I'm I'm just like you. I just happen to be a girl. Well, what do you think, Tom? Sixteen and uh, twenty gauge for home defense? Because uh, twenty about- gauge. Yeah, twenty. Yeah, uh, uh, 20, twenty gauge. Yeah, now, sixteen is dead. Uh, but twenty gauge, a twenty gauge pump or semi-auto is a really good tool, and it is absolutely as effective as a twelve gauge. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, it's not a problem. Stoke it up with buckshot or or, or slug yeah, or whatever you want to stick. It's more in manageable it. than a twelve for sure. Oh, yeah, absolutely. The recoil, the recoil is much much better. Yeah. Well, and typically, when you're looking at these home defense guns in that aspect, most people want to go toward a pistol grip type, you know, Mossberg five hundred tactical gun. Mm-hmm. I mean, that that's really what they're looking for. They're looking to make it as short as they can. So, you know, even putting it up against the, the hip, if necessary, to, to give them a little bit more management. Uh, yeah. I I don't know. That's interesting. I, I'm, I'm, I got to tell you, I'm not a fan of the cruiser style shotgun that has no stock on it mm-hmm. because it's it's really easy to miss. And people go, oh, it's a shotgun. You can't miss. Yeah, you yeah, can. You can. <laughs> you can miss really, really easily. And if you're not aiming it, you just kind of got it down by your side. And if you haven't practiced with it that way, mm-hmm. uh, you know, you probably, the other thing is a lot of people are not going to shoot it that way. It's not fun to shoot a shotgun, a cruiser shotgun. They kick oh, yeah. when they're just, all you have is your hand and your wrist trying to stop the recoil versus your shoulder. Right. So I would say get a, uh, um, a regular shotgun stock. And if you want, cut the stock down an inch or two. Take it to a, a gun store and have them chop it down and put another recoil pad on it. Shorter stocks are better for defensive use. It just, uh, they'll mount up quicker, easier, and you're you're just going to look down the barrel and aim it, and it, you're going to be better with a shoulder mount rather than a shooting from the hip with a cruiser-style shotgun with just the pistol grip on it. Well, and, and any of those shotguns, I would say a, a laser is going to be probably a great acquisition. Well, I was going to say, if you're going to use a cruiser style, you definitely want a laser on it. Now you can just put the laser on it, and the, you know, the shot's going to go there. But. Right. Well, yeah, you... I, I think a laser, and a, I'll tell you, I think a red dot sight on your long gun and a laser is a great combination. When Crimson Trace just makes that new system that they've put out there, too, um, the Lynx system. I don't know if you're oh, familiar. Yeah, mm-hmm, for yeah this. We, we, were just, we were just doing something. It's a, it replaces the grip, the pistol grip, and then you've got a, uh, a unit that clips onto the, uh, the forearm. Mm-hmm. 
and you could have, and it's a light and laser combo. It's like Bluetooth, isn't it? Well, they, they're very careful. They say it's not Bluetooth and it's not Wi-Fi. It's wireless. So I don't know what frequency it's Some, on. Yeah, proprietary thing, right? Yeah, and they always say cool. we know it, it will not open your garage door. You know, <laughs> won't pop the popcorn. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Well, you know, the tr- your your trunk won't be popping open out there. You know, but um, yeah, we've had a chance to use it, and it's slick. It is really nice. So cool. a light and a laser. Uh, that you just pick up, it's extinctive, instinctive, not extinctive. I go, I guess it could extinguish something. <laughs> <laughs> but when you pick it up, grip it, it turns on. And you have light and laser. And you need white light. A home defense gun needs white light on it. Because uh, you're going to lie, probably going to be in the dark. And you need to identify, is this kid, neighbor, dog? What is this thing mm-hmm. out there? And the, the white light, flashlight, whatever makes all the difference. And in talking about this stuff, too, we're talking about something that you can pick up and maneuver around your home quickly. So, you know, something that's heavy or requires many things to do, uh, you know, putting it up to your shoulder, you can very easily keep it there and still have access with the other hand of things to do. So regardless of whatever you use, I mean, you need something that's going to be maneuvered yeah, in yeah. in and out of yeah. rooms and, and it adds doors. Not, not your twenty eight yeah. inch duck, you know, barrel duck gun. Right. It's just too long. Right. And so. you need to be able to get to it. Yeah. You can't you get to it. And I will I also add this: if you're really serious about this, you want a sling on it because mm-hmm. mm-hmm. the yeah, sling is your holster for a long gun. Yeah. You don't know when you're going to need your hands for something. Yep. Exactly right. Hey, can I you're shift gears a totally up. different direction, Tom? Certainly. Great. We, on the show today, you had mentioned about a buddy of yours, a rather intelligent guy, who said he's voting for the Green Party to try to get them some Fed dollars for the 2020 election. Uh, Mm -hmm. And I'm sure this guy knows what he's talking about. My feeling on that is there may not be a 2020 if we don't defeat Hillary this time. Well, his point was with the Electoral College, and that's the whole thing. Mm -hmm. He said he's in a state that's probably going to go 20 percent margin for Hillary. Okay. He says his vote, there's no way... He's going to actually be able to affect the election mm-hmm. toward Trump. And, you know, and that's the, the curse of the Electoral College, which should be done away with, of course. Right. And so I'm going, OK, I get that. Yeah, that's that is a valid point. Your vote is not going to change your state. And only whichever way your state goes is how the votes are going to go in the Electoral College. OK, got that. He says, but if I can help the Green Party down the line, maybe have them hurt the Democrats, then at least my vote has use. Ah, okay. I'm glad you clarified that. That's his that. thinking. Okay, on. yeah, I'm glad you clarified. Yeah. I didn't realize he was in a in a sworn to Hillary state. Yeah. You know, and you've got states that are sworn to Trump. Right. There's no way they're going to go blue. And you go, okay, is there some other action I can take here? And I know that there are going to be people who say, well, that's why I'm going to vote for Gary Johnson, because I'm in one of the states. Okay. But if you're in where you guys are, if you're in Ohio or Pennsylvania or Florida or Virginia, one of the swing states, then it's all all in. And the other thing is, I keep forgetting to mention this. I don't know why. A lot of people are actually not registered to vote. A lot of gun owners are not registered to vote. A little late now. Um, no, in a lot of states, you can still register. Okay. Oh, some are uh, 30 days. Yeah, I think ours is 90, right? I, pretty I, sure think I can't recall. 90? I thought it was 90. 90. That's, that's terrible. Oh. You know, I had people suggest this, and Michelle, what would you be your thoughts of a gun store having forms there for voter registration? Absolutely. Why not? We have forms there yeah. to uh, join you up for the NRA. <laughs> anything exactly. that anything yeah. that we can do to uh, help support that, and and whether you're one way or the other, it, it doesn't matter. It, it's still a it viable matter. place. You need, you need to vote. Exactly. That's right. It, it is your duty. To vote, you know, in uh, I think in Australia, voting is compulsory. Uh, Jim, that means you have to do it. <laughs> well, thing I was just looking up that word. I was <laughs> <laughs> compulsory is with a K, right? <laughs> yes, yes. There's a lot of people that don't want to hear the politics and therefore stay out of it, and therefore don't vote. And to me, that's a sad state to be in. I don't want to be that ostrich with my head in the sand to to not think that I could do something to change it because that's how they feel. They can't change it anyways, but you can. And like you say, in certain states, absolutely you can. One person, you know, several people, whatever it is. If, if one person in the household doesn't vote, then typically 
none of the people in the household vote because it's not important it's to them. And so it's when true. we're raising generations of kids in, in a home that doesn't vote, you're not helping support the democratic process. I mean, well, okay, the, take take that idea. What about taking young kids with you when you go to the polls so they can see the process and, mm-hmm. and they you know, can understand how this works and how important this is? And when you are an American, this is what you do as an American. Well, in any male that lives in this country that is a U.S. citizen has to, at the age of 18, sign up for selective service. Right. That's the law. And, and this should be taken the same way. This is your right. This is your ability. This is your voice. You have a chance to make a difference. You have an opportunity to vote on what is important to you or may become important to your family down the line. I guess that's one of the ways that we're looking at this is it's unfortunate for me. It's extremely unfortunate for my kids and my to-be grandchildren. I don't know. That's just the platform that we're on. You got to lead by example. Yeah, totally yeah. take them voting. Yeah, mm-hmm. give them the little stamp you get for voting, the little sticker. Right. I mean, our well, kids, you know, our kids have gone with us before. Yeah, you know, and for those who say, "Well, you know, I, I just don't do that. It, it doesn't make a difference." I don't know. It kind of goes back to what I was talking about earlier in the show, which is, well, it's all about who you are. How do you see yourself? You know, are you a person who says, "No, this is important." Maybe it's not important because I will make a difference, but it's important because it determines who I am. Yeah, I, I personally don't care about the Facebook posts. This is where my you know, interests are. But Facebook is life. Yeah. I know. Well, and, and so many people are wrapped up in that. And I'm not saying that it's not important, that it's not your ties to many people. I'm, I'm not saying that at all. But I am. It's, it's not important. It's, it's in the <laughs> face of where we are in reality and where we're going. That's really not where I'm going to be spending my time. You know, likes are not currency. You cannot take them down to the Kroger and buy anything with them. They are virtual things that don't mean anything. And people who, unfortunately, we got kids growing up where they live and die, literally die on the basis of likes and dislikes mm-hmm. uh, and you know all of that. And it's just, it's so meaningless. It's so nothing. And you think, how did somebody raise a kid to think that that's important? Same thing. Example. Yeah, can we wrap this how, up? How My Pokemon Go are. crew is getting together, and we got to... Gosh. <laughs> well, the good news is you, you can provide top cover. You go out there with your AR while they're uh, grabbing all the Pokemon things, right? <laughs> Trespassing my butt. Hey, uh, from That's the right. Department of Jim Doesn't Know What He's Talking About, uh, in Ohio, you can register up till October 11th, and you have to be a resident for 30 days. <laughs> so, so I was close. 30 days. It's 27 Are, are, are you days. new in the state? You, you just moved to Ohio, right? Yeah. 27-day... Uh, deadline before the election. Okay, so so Michelle can be putting those into the stores. Absolutely. We could get those into stores, and we could do. You know, why wouldn't somebody just go set up a table at? Here's this would be depressing. Set up a table at a gun store, a, a gun a show, a gun show. Yeah, and it would be depressing to see how many people would not do it or would tell you why they're not going to do it. Well, and it's kind of funny, Jim. You bring up the Pokemon Go program because here at one of the local universities i wasn't kidding michelle it's my life (laughs) here at one of the local universities they were set up as i don't know a ghost as some kind of a site Mm -hmm. and that's what they were doing is they were (laughs) registering people to vote Wow. They really? Yes, they were. Okay, that's pretty clever. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Using your head. So there that's you go. Clever. So suck them right in. I will <laughs> like it. So you can use technology. <laughs> so you know what you could do? Yeah. You could have a, if you made it sound like a big deal, not just like we're giving out forms, you get a free voter registration card with every purchase. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> hey, everybody wow. wants something vote, for free. <laughs> right. Vote <laughs> early, vote often. That's right. <laughs> you know, okay. Here's a chance to I make a difference sound- in your life. <laughs> How about a raffle, a gun raffle, and to enter, you have to either show your voter ID card or fill out an application for a voter ID card. I don't have an ID card. Yeah, we don't have ID cards. Yeah. Either. I don't either. You don't have ID cards. What do you do? You just, you just use... Man, they don't trust us around here. Actually, we don't. I think we just show up. So we have to show our driver's you, license, and they're like, yeah, "Oh yeah, yeah, that's you." You really want to drive nuts yeah. if if you're in a state where they compare signatures, like they do in our in our precinct at least. Right. Uh, every year, I ask this. You know, why don't you guys cover that up? Because I could just be you know forging that guy's name. You're giving me an example right there to use. They're like, 
Right. Yeah, I never thought of that. It's like, it, well, I ask you every time I come here. Except you have a driver's license with a picture ID. Right. But I mean, just uh, you see the signatures. Like, why don't you cover that up? Let me sign it, then compare the two. Hmm. Just, have you tried? Did, don't I remember you said you used your concealed carry permit? Oh, I do. It drives them nuts. <laughs> we can't accept this. Yes, you can. It's state issued ID. It's fine. <laughs> No, you can't. All right, then call your supervisor at the election board, and they'll tell you. And I wait, and they do. You're, you're that guy, aren't you? Yeah. When I have the time to be a, a jerk, I do. Okay, so see, all the people that I'm going to register to vote do not want to be in line behind you now. That's right. <laughs> like, why? Why did I get suckered jerk. into this? Well, with, with my neighbors, with my neighbors, they're in front of me and behind me, the same guy. <laughs> yeah, okay. Yeah. Jim Jim has to wear a shirt on the back of it that says, you really don't want to be behind me. <laughs> Sponsored by Hormel Chili or Taco Bell or something, too. Oh, that's a different reason. Never mind. Oh, oh different thing there. That's right. Yeah. That's a, being upwind and downwind. That's a good <laughs> Nice. There's not enough scent killer in the world for that, oh, right? No. <laughs> Ouch. God, we did Whoa. <sighs> Oh, off topic. All this and more. Well, we don't know. Be- we don't know beans about that. Oh, but up. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy. All right. So let me see one more time because he called and he was so nice. We're going to give out the information for Quick Glow. It's Q U I C dash G L O dot com. Uh, if you place an order, tell him you heard about it on Gun Talk. Put in Tom or something. He'll waive the uh, shipping. It looks like it's a pretty cool polish. I've just been looking at it. And the guy got uh, hammered by the floods that he could use a little bit of business. So you could use it on your guns. You could use it on, looks like pretty much anything. It's basically, it's a kind of a, a polished pumice kind of system. Mm-hmm. Look, looks kind of cool, though. Yep. He also so said he could call him direct at 225-937-0276. Oh, and if you go to YouTube, you can see videos of using it on... Let's see, uh, chrome motorcycle pipes and all sorts of metal stuff and clean, it's like, it's like a rubbing windshields. Compound almost, no? and, yeah, it's, it, I think it's a real fine rubbing compound, basically. Because yeah, he said, what, it was a 6,500 grit or something? Yeah, and it's... Yeah, they've got three different grits now. Mm-hmm. So Water-based. So counterto- shelf cleans grit. countertops, cleans anything. I'm going to try it on... I know I've got... Sh- I want to shine the spinner on my airplane. There you go. <laughs> There you go. Yeah. Well, you have to Sounds buy the like aviation quick glow. It's seven hundred dollars for the same. Seven hundred dollars. Normally fifteen dollars. Now seven hundred. That's exactly right. <laughs> Did you happen to see the story about uh, Mercedes bringing out the new is it Maybach or Maybach? Uh uh-uh. uh The car. It's a pretty cool no. looking car. No, I haven't. It's you got to look it up. It's okay. six meters long. What is that? Twenty feet? Yeah, just shy. And it's a two. <laughs> it's it's a two seater. Wow. But the concept yeah. looks awesome. <laughs> It looks it looks very cool, but I did not see any place to put a trailer hitch on it. <laughs> <laughs> so that, that could be a problem. How, how am I going to pull my duck boat? I mean, really, guys, come on! You know, at 150 miles an hour. <laughs> <laughs> it's great, an airboat. Just, you don't need one. <laughs> great on the autobahn with your bass boat flapping around. That's right, flopping around behind. There you go. Oh God! I don't know where I'm going, but yeah. we're going fast. That's <laughs> right. Well, you guys heard about the, the, the two guys from uh, South Alabama out deer hunting, and uh, one of them killed a, a really big buck. He says, hey, give me a hand. Grab hold of these antlers. We'll drag it back. He said, okay. They get a hold of it, drag it, and these big antlers are getting hung up on everything, on the brush and the trees and everything. You guys have heard this? No, sir. No, go ahead. Of course you have. All right. <laughs> so they're dragging this thing back. They said, this is just not working. This big antlers are getting hung up on everything. He said, well, what if we grab the back legs? And drag it that way, and the antlers will slide through. You go, yeah, it works. Okay, let's try it anyway. So they grab the back legs, and they take off. And, man, that's working great. And he says, man, they're making good time. One of them says, you know, this is this was smart. I'm glad you thought this, were, this is really going to work. He says, yeah, it is. But, you know, we're getting awful far from the truck. <laughs> and Michelle, they went the other way. <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> Oh, it hurt, I know. <laughs> and with that, I think we probably are finished. Yeah, we probably should quit on that. <laughs> so, did you guys enjoy the last after show? Was it good? Was it good for you? <laughs> the last after show. <laughs> I don't know, shoot three arrows up in the air. We need help. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, goodness gracious. Okay. Hi, my name's. Well, guys, you have a great week. I'm going to be in Las Vegas, and we're going to be shooting videos with Mr. Rob Latham and doing some fun stuff there. Oh, oh poor so there you. is a bright side. There is a bright yeah. side. We'll, 
<laughs> we'll be having more stories, no doubt, by the time we get back. Yeah. Give him a real lip wrist and handshake for me again, will you? Tell him that's from Jim. <laughs> from Jim, I yeah. got him at the NRA show. Yeah. He puts his hand out and I said, really spaghetti noodled him. He's like, oh, great. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks a lot. Yeah. Well, it's really fun. We're going to have uh, the two uh, William sisters, those little girls. Oh, yeah. They're such good shooters. Yeah. And, of course, they're hilarious because Rob's like twice as tall as they are. And they give as good as they get. And they're just all goofballs, really. It's just yeah. really fun. Good kids. Great good kids. Young, young yeah. ladies, and, I should say. And, boy, can they shoot. I mean, fastest reloads you've ever seen. It's just astounding. So if anybody wants to see, just look up the Williams sisters, not the tennis players, but the, the other ones, the shooters on YouTube, and you'll go, whoa, yeah. and they're just little bitty things. It's, it's really fun. Yeah. Give them five years. Imagine where they're going to be. Jerry Mikulik. Yeah, no kidding. <laughs> yep. Hello. Hello. <laughs> Nobody home. Go away. <laughs> Rotten kids. <laughs> I just retired a couple of years ago. <laughs> That's right. Leave me alone. Oh, good for them. You guys have a good week. Travel safely. Bye, Tom. Take care. Tell your friends about the Gun Talk After Show, a more informal setting featuring Tom, Michelle, and Jim commenting on topics that are important to you. Available on iTunes and other podcatchers and the Gun Dealio smartphone app for iPhone and Android.